Hey everybody, Mark Edward Lewis here from cinemasound.com. Today we're going to be talking about a little audio secrets, uh, some uh, hush hush secrets in Adobe Rush. Now, if you haven't used Rush, it's the all the rage in doing video editing, audio editing, full production really on your phone, your mobile device, and of course on the desktop as well. It's a really wonderful, fast way of getting videos quick looking great color correction audio plugins basically a beautiful hybrid of premiere and audition put into a mobile device uh, application that just kicks arse and you have it on the desktop even better it's integrated on creative cloud with all your devices and all your plugins and that's a bit of the secret sauce i'm going to show you in a second let's roll all right, so we're here in Adobe Rush. Now, this is the desktop version, but it's identical in functionality to the iPhone and Android version. It's just you know, on a different screen layout. And here's me recording myself on my iPhone 7 Plus using, in this case, the iPhone 7 Plus microphone and then the Ceremonic uh, Lab that plugs into the lightning port. See the difference in sound. All right, here's me just sort of outside in a very urban area i'm just using my iphone here uh the microphones that are built in you know not that great it's noisy out here uh there's traffic from cars it's yeah it's pretty awful and hand noise and all kinds of things like this now here is us doing the same recording in the same place same phone but with a lav plugged into the lightning port now here we are again. I'm on the Ceremonic Lav, um, and obviously it's going to be a bit closer sound. We're going to have some wind noise, etc. That's for sure. But uh, hopefully, because I'm much louder, we can bring down the volume a little bit and use that denoising uh, to get a good signal. Indeed, we can. So uh, we uh, probably have tons of videos out there for how to do the titling and how to do color correction and the transitions and all the great things that we can do here. I mean, in fact, let's just do a little Kodak. And what's great about it is anytime you get stuck, just like in the old iMovie, like here's cinematic, which is pretty cool, especially with the palm trees in the background. You know, you can just go back to none and you're back to normal again. This is all calculating in real time on your computer, as of course it does on your phone, which is unbelievable. But we have the audio elements here. And if you've ever used uh, Premiere Pro or Adobe Audition, you'll know and be familiar with the Essential Sound Panel. We call it the ESP. And that's what they've taken many of these from in terms of its power and placed it in Adobe Rush. So what's the first thing that we notice about this audio? He just sort of outside. In a it's low. And this clip volume slider isn't just a volume slider. It actually has some compression and limiting in it so that we don't get too loud. So that if we bring this up. Very urban area. I'm just using my iPhone here. Uh, the mic We can still get a good volume without going over too far. Now, this, of course, is only applying to the clip and there isn't a way to do this to a track because there really aren't any tracks here. So we can continue to add audio here and add ducking if we wish. So continuing on microphones that are built in, we need to fix the noise and that can be done here. There, we don't have any echo to worry about, but we reduce background noise and you have a nice slider here. This is the same algorithm that's in Adobe Audition outside in a very urban area i'm just using my iphone here uh the microphones that are built in you know now remember with any kind of denoise or anti-noise or whatever you have a coefficient between all the noise and no artifacts and all the artifacts and no noise we need to find a clever balance there and here it's around 33 percent let's see how this sounds not that great it's noisy now we also notice that the volume is sort of going up and down and we can fix that by hitting balance the sound and it actually adds compression in a very urban area i'm just using my iphone here uh the mic and then also it seems kind of dark because that microphone on the iphone is horrible we can hit enhance speech and uh, don't be confused, this isn't a male enhancement, even though that's what it says. But check out the list, listen to how this sounds here. Hide in a very urban area, I'm just using my iPhone here. Uh, the microphones that are built. It adds a little bit of body to the sound, but what we really need is high frequency. So we'll go to the female enhancement. Then, you know, not that great. It's noisy out here. Uh, there's traffic from cars. 
It helps it a little bit. The problem with this particular recording is there just isn't any high frequencies here. So it's helping a little bit. So we're going to move on from here to this one. I'm on the Ceremonic Lav. Uh, Same thing. It's a little low in volume, so we'll bring this up. Um, and obviously it's going to be a bit closer sound. We'll do the balance sound. sound. We're going to have some wind noise, etc. That's for sure. We'll do some reduced background noise. But uh, hopefully because I'm much louder, we can bring down the volume a little bit and use that denoising. Now here's a really good example of how the enhanced female speech sounds. If we turn it off. Have, um, and obviously it's going to be a bit closer and sound. We're going to have some wind noise, etc. That's for sure. But uh, hopefully because I'm much louder. And the male version of same is this outer we can bring down the volume a little bit and use that denoise now you'll notice what's happening on both male and females it, is it's cutting out the super low rumble the male's getting a more full-bodied sound which because of the wind noise is an issue and the female sounds getting having all of that cut out and nice high frequencies added so we'll leave the female enhancement on the ceremonic lav um and now notice what's happening is that it says that this is voice. Now we can change this to music or other sound effects, etc., and get different functionality. But for now, obviously, since this is voice, we like having uh, balance of sound. And of course, auto, val auto volume is something that kind of makes both of these the same volume, so we don't have to move any volume. You have a good idea what it's like. There's wind noise, all kinds of stuff like this. Kind of hard to get a good sound, but hopefully we can fix that here in Rush. Now here we are again. I'm on the Ceremonic Lav. And the EQ of the voices notwithstanding, they are about the same volume, which is super great. Now let's add some music to this and see how it goes. So how we add media is we just go to the plus here and we can add title media or voiceovers. Uh, again, this is the same on your phone and you just navigate to where you want to add a file. In this case, we'll add this. And if you want to add multiple files, it shows you what order it is that it will put it in your timeline, one, first, second, or third. And you can alter that by simply selecting or unselecting the way you want the order to go. We'll say add, it will import it. We'll close this window and we'll drag this over. Notice that if we click over here on the audio, it will have already selected our music track as music. It figured that out and made auto volume, which means that it's already reduced it so that it doesn't cover our dialogue. Right here, uh, there's traffic from cars, etc. Actually, I'm not driving right now, but... Which is pretty cool. If we turn off auto volume... Also, this gives you a good idea of what it's like. It's wind noise, all kinds of stuff like this. Kind of hard to get... Which makes it a little too loud. Then if we click auto duck, everybody knows I hate ducks, but what this does is actually automatically brings down the music whenever there's dialogue. And you can see the line that it made down here. After the dialogue's complete, the music comes back up. Voice. Uh, again, let's see how Rush does here. Pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. And you can change what level you want it to be reduced by here. With auto volume, I think it actually makes it a little too much of a ducking. So I turn off auto volume and I use just auto duck because this, this way I can get to uh, control exactly how far that stuff comes down. Some of this traffic noise that's out here down enough so that we can get good, good voice. Uh, again, let's see how Rush does here. Again, this has been pulled from the Essential Sound Panel and it makes all of this so fast and so easy to do. And you can do all of this in your phone. This is the desktop version. Imagine being able to do this on your phone instantly. Now here is where it gets awesome. When we go back to the home menu, we'll notice that it's already been saved. It's in this little home window where all our projects live. This has actually been saved to the cloud. And if you have a, you know, a cell data plan that's a little low, this is going to get kind of intense on it. So you want to make sure you're connected to Wi-Fi if you're on your phone. But from here, it is on the cloud. And what that gives us the, ab the ability to do is pull it up in Adobe Premiere Pro or, of course, in Rush. Uh, if you When you work it on the desktop, open it on the desktop, this will all show up as if you had been cutting on your phone. But the power comes, again, in Premiere Pro. We're going to open Premiere. Here appears Open Premiere Rush Project. And this appears just like it does in Rush. We can double click on it and it will open the Rush project in Premiere. And now, once opened, it gives us all the powerful functionality that we expect from Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, check this out. 
render these files because they're obviously highly compressed because they came from a phone. It gives you a good idea what it's like, there's wind noise, all kinds of stuff like this. And if we look at effects controls and we click on audio, we'll see all of the effects that have been added to audio, including denoise, dynamics, vocal enhancer, hard limiter, and all the things that happened under the hood while we were in Rush. Now we have the capability to edit this and do all kinds of effects and functions that we want if we want to take our Rush recording and our Rush session to a new level. And then of course from here, we also have the ability to take the audio into unknown territories, Adobe After Effects or edit in Audition. And we can take this and use it via Dynamic Link and do all the things that we talk about in the cinema sound education and all the customization that's possible there. So Rush is really a game changer for anybody doing quick videos and they want to post them on TikTok or Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, YouTube, because you can not only make things look great, but have a fighting chance of getting them to sound great, even though we're using our phone mics or even worse. But Rush has that capability to be able to clean everything up snap everything up and make everything look sharp so that we can look our best. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If so, please subscribe to us here on the Cinema Sound channel and come visit us at cinemasound.com where we have hundreds and hundreds of articles to help you get that powerful and unfair competitive advantage that Hollywood has in both how your picture works and the immersive sound elements of production. Until then, we'll see you on set. Even if you're